About two months ago, Lisa Su surprised everyone when she went on stage at Computex and showed the world a Ryzen 9 5900X prototype using 3D stacked cache. But what is 3D cache anyways? How does it work? What are the implications for manufacturing those new 3D chips? What are the performance benefits? And most importantly, when can you buy it? Stay tuned. Current chips, be it CPUs or TPUs, are manufactured in 2D. Yes, there are some 3D-like structures, transistors are getting more and more depth, and so on, but chip dies are a plane. And no matter if you are buying a current Intel Core or an AMD Ryzen CPU, they are not 3D in their design. This is about to change, and Zen 3D will be first. So how does it work? At the very basic level, you can actually take the name stacking quite literally. Two chips are produced and then they're stacked on top of each other. In the case of Zen 3 with so-called 3D V-cache, it's the CPU die on the bottom and then a cache die on top. For communication, AMD and the manufacturer TSMC are using so-called TSVs. TSV is short for through silicon via, and via is short for vertical interconnect access. It's actually a very good description on how this technology works if you read the full name, through silicon vertical interconnect access. Because the two chips communicate by using vertical interconnects, think little copper wires that are going right through the silicon in a vertical way. They connect through every layer of the chip and on the bottom chip there is a reception area where those wires connect to. This means there is direct and fast connection between the stacked chips. And because going up vertically means there's only a very small distance you have to go, it doesn't take a lot of time or energy. The connection to the stacked chip might be even faster than if you go from one side to the other side of the bottom chip. It's really, really fast. But why would you stack extra cache on top of an Zen 3 CPU instead of just adding more cache within it? The answer is pretty simple. It's space and efficiency and space efficiency. Zen 3 is manufactured in TSMC's 7 nanometer process. But there isn't just a single 7 nanometer process. There's plenty of different ways to approach the production of it. You have a choice of different so-called libraries. These are basically instructions on how to create a good layout for the chip. And depending on what your goal is, you use different libraries. If you want to produce high-performance logic transistors, like the Zen 3 CPU cores, you use a library that is optimized for logic and high clock speeds. And if you want to produce dense cache, you would use a library that's designed to enable the most dense cache. But a Zen 3 CPU die has both of it. It has the Zen 3 CPU cores and a lot of cache on top of it. And since the performance of the CPU cores are the most important, because that's where the performance is created, basically, AMD uses logic-optimized libraries. That means the on-die cache isn't as dense as it could be, because it's not using cache-optimized libraries. Just take a look at this Zen 3 4 plan. Um, by the way, thanks to the retired engineer on Twitter for this. Um, I'm going to link his tweet below. And, and see how much space the L3 cache occupies compared to the actual Zen 3 CPU cores. It's huge if you take the whole chip into account. The best example is this. While the Zen 3 base die has 32 megabytes of L3 cache included, the stacked cache die, which uses the same amount of space because it sits right on top of it, packs a whole 64 megabytes of L3 cache. That's literally twice as much. Now, not 
all of that is due to the cache optimized libraries. You also save from some additional logic dedicated to manage the L3 cache, but the majority is the cache optimized production. So if you stack one of those cache dies on top of the base Zen 3 die, you go from 32 megabytes of L3 cache to a whopping 96 megabytes of L3 cache. That's an insane amount of L3 cache for a CPU, especially in the desktop space. But it doesn't stop there. Zen 3 was still designed without 3D stacking. Yes, they implemented some features to enable it in the future, but at the beginning, Zen 3 had to launch without stacking and AMD didn't really know if and when stacking would become possible. Now imagine AMD would have known that 3D stacking would have been possible right away from the start. Maybe that would have changed the design from the very beginning. If I would redesign Zen 3 for performance, but also die size efficiency and economic viability, I would reduce the amount of cache on the base die. Let's say cut it in half to only 60 megabytes of L3 cache. This would greatly reduce the die size of the Zen 3 CPU chiplet, since the L3 cache takes up so much space. Remember the floor plan we had a look at earlier. And um, because the used libraries aren't optimized for it. That means I could put more of those on the single waiver and the yields would probably increase too. In the next step, I would produce little 32 megabytes cache dies and stack them on top. They would also be tiny and easy to produce. And in the end, I would have a Zen 3 chiplet with 48 megabytes of L3 cache, 16 megabytes at the base die and another 32 megabytes from the stacked cache die. More than current Zen 3 MCPUs have, and my manufacturing costs would decrease due to smaller dies and higher yields. Of course, you have to put them together. The packaging is more difficult and costly than with just a single 2D chip, but TSMC has been working on this for a while now, and they clearly think they can handle, handle it and are ready for it. And I'm pretty sure it doesn't add more costs than you save regarding manufacturing. And then there is the extra question of thermals. Modern CPUs get really hot, especially the cores. So stacking an extra chip on top of it doesn't really help with that. And um, that's why the L3 cache die sits only above the L3 cache area on the base die and doesn't layer on top of the CPU cores. So they try to avoid it that way. Now we know how it works and why it makes sense. But what about the most important aspect for most of us? Does it really make sense performance-wise? Well, that depends on what you use it for. Applications that benefit from cache would see big performance benefits and others that don't rely on cache that much would not. Luckily, games really love more cache. AMD said that the extra 3D cache adds about 15% more gaming performance on top of the base Zen 3 performance. That's quite a lot when you consider that Zen 3 improved IPC by 90% over Zen 2, so 15% is almost a whole generation in terms of performance. Some leaks even say it might be more than that. And the next question would be, when can you buy it? There hasn't been an official announcement from AMD so far. All they said was that Zen 3D would go into production this year in 2021. Um, usually it takes some time from the start of production until the product actually hits the shelves. So most people would guess early 2022 would be a decent time frame. Um, but recent rumors have hinted at an early release, maybe even this year in 2021. I think AMD is reacting to the hype that's starting to surround Intel Alder Lake and they want to be ready to strike that back. Um, nevertheless, we'll have a hot hardware fall ahead of us and I cannot wait to see how Zen 3D performs against Intel's Alder Lake. Are you also excited about 3D stacking? Do you think it will be part of every future CPU design or maybe the idea just won't take off in the long run? And how much more performance do you expect 
from a Zen 3 with an additional 3D stacked L3 cache on top. Leave a comment down below and let me know. I would love to hear your opinions. That's been it for today. See you next time. Bye. Thank you.